guys. I'm Matt Peterson, uh, Residential Life Area Coordinator. Welcome to, Kirkson, to the Kirkson campus. I'm Jeff Neck, also an Area Coordinator at UMC here. Um, so we just wanted to welcome you to the first Facebook and Instagram Live housing tour uh, that we're going to be providing for you guys here today. And we're starting out in Centennial Hall uh, here at UMC. Now, for, before we get started, uh, we just want to do a sound check. Can everyone hear us? If you want to make a comment real quick. Oh, we're good? Okay, we're good. Super. <laughs> All right. But yeah, well, behind us here, this is our front desk. Um, and this is typically open Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. So there's a big wide range when it's open. Sandy DeRosier is the administrative specialist that works here for residential life, uh, primarily through those business hours, 8 to 4.30. Um, but you can see as we pan across the lobby here, we have a big screen TV, nice long space for people to hang out at. Um, a great uh, printer here as well too, you can see that you can hook up to the network. Cool thing about Kirkston campus, um, students can hook up to any printer um, in the residence halls and print off, which is a really nice uh, option for students there for printing off assignments, things of that nature. Um, yeah, so some things to note. This is our front, front, our headquarters for residential life. So your keys, um, if you have questions throughout the school year with roommates, things of that nature. Um, we do put on a lot of programming throughout the semester events. Um, the CAs, our community advisors, we'll talk a little bit about those as we walk through the res halls, but we'll point, point out what they do. They're the student leaders uh, in the residence halls that promote campus environment, uh, community, uh, community building through programming. Um, so yeah, we do put on a lot of different things here on the campus. So well, let's jump to it. Uh, we'll start uh, on our way over here to look at the Centennial Apartment. Generally, uh, the students who live in this building are gonna be upperclassmen who've uh, been on campus for a few semesters already. Um, we do have this conference room here, which is also a classroom. Uh, so students, we have three classrooms in the residence halls and students will often find classes here. So it's really nice when you just wake up in the morning and you can come out of your dorm room, walk downstairs and you're in your classroom. It's kind of uh, unique and uh, really close, especially on those cold winter days where you don't want to walk across campus. So nice thing about this room is it has so much natural lighting here. So you can see we don't even have the lights on right now, but look how illuminated it is from just the natural light. So really cool space for events on campus and groups activity. Well, yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll make our way over. We're gonna show you guys uh, actual Centennial Apartments, which is an option for on-campus living. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see here behind Jeff, this is our residential life front, uh, our staff, so community advisor staff. We usually employ about 13 to 15 CAs um, each semester. This is our professional staff here as well that work throughout the school year um, as well. We have our custodian staff, our maintenance staff, the director of residential life, Gary Willey. Um, yeah, so we are, we're, our pictures are usually posted in each residence hall building. Cool thing about this space here, um, what we can highlight the laundry facility. Each building has laundry facilities, and a new change that we did implement is free laundry. So um, you don't need quarters, you don't need uh, any money, you just come on in here, you can load up your dirty laundry. Um, each uh, laundry facility has you typically about two washers and two dryers, um, all free, so really nice. So let's head upstairs and take a look at a apartment in Centennial. Something to note too, uh, Centennial Hall actually does not have an elevator, but uh, we'll show you what well, halls do have an elevator. So Centennial does not, but we have stairwells. Mm -hmm. Evergreen, we'll walk through our, like a... It's kind of like elevator. a cargo elevator. Cargo for, elevator. For, uh, you know, boxes and stuff as you're moving in, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't put a person in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, this apartment here. Gotta find the right key. So here we are. I wouldn't say fully furnished. It does come with um, the bare necessities that you're going to need. So we do have a, a kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and two bathrooms. In the living room, you're going to find a couch 
in two chairs, often a TV stand as well, and then uh, the kitchen also has all the appliances you're gonna need, so stove, microwave, uh, dishwasher, everything uh, already in there. Nice thing to note too about all of our on-campus uh, facilities that we all uh, have connections to the Wi-Fi, um, the UMC Wi-Fi, which is great, really strong on campus. Um, we also, each room has uh, capability to hook up to cable TV. Um, so if you have like a, a smart TV or whatever TV, um, nice little option there. Um, you can hook up easily to the network and uh, so that's really nice. Um, some things also to note about the kitchen uh, in Centennial, um, we do have dishwashers. Um, each apartment space has their own dishwasher, uh, full-size fridge, freezer, oven, um, which is kind of unique uh, for, for housing amenities for on-campus housing. Also a microwave. Look at all the drawer space you have. Um, so it's really nice. Uh, we try to make it as homey as we can for, for the students here on campus. So, and if as we go through, um, if you want to check our Res Life website, that's where you can find the most up-to-date uh, housing rates for all of our apartments so and all of our buildings. So, And just to clarify, apartments have can uh, fit four people into mm -hmm. apartments, so two people per bedroom, and there's two bathrooms per apartment, two showers um, per, per apartment as well, too, and a shared living space as well, too, so just to clarify. And if you guys have any questions as we go through as well, please make sure that you're commenting um, in the comment section below. So uh, we'll head over to Skyver now. The way we're walking right now, we're on the north side of Centennial Hall. And uh, as you look out the way, uh, right out here, but the, the building that we're looking at is the new wellness center. Um, this campus is they're really small, but um, this building, Centennial Hall, you're really close to the wellness center, uh, which is a nice perk, you know, in the winter time. Uh, if you just want to get a quick workout in or something, you can easily just easy access. Also to the for students. Um, typically we have freshmen, sophomore, junior, uh, senior that live in Skyberg Hall. Nice thing about Skyberg is um, we do offer single rooms uh, for an additional rate. Um, per semester but we also have double rooms so you can have again it's, it's really great for that community building because um, really you only have this this room here so um, it's a traditional style uh, room so you're gonna be spending a lot of time in here all of these rooms but really if you need to leave your room to go to the kitchen you need to do laundry you need to do all that stuff um, it, it helps build the community when you have um, a smaller space like this because then you're kind of forced to go out and interact with other people so that's the uh, the plus I see about this building is that it's got a really vibrant community because a lot of people spend time in the common spaces so so Skyberg Hall um, you can see it comes with uh, basic things the basic things for your room so you get two desks um, chair you don't have to worry about bringing much furniture really um, we got these nightstands here. Uh, if you do want a loft uh, for Skyberg Hall, it's a separate cost that you just need to let us know. It gives you a little bit more space. You can see this is a loft, lofted bed, so you can see how much stuff you can put under um, the loft, which is really quite nice. Um, Skyberg rooms come with a refrigerator and a freezer, a mini uh, fridge and a freezer, and you can see right here, this is where um, what it looks like here. Um, if you need to bring another small uh, refrigerator, you're certainly welcome to do so. We just ask not like big freezers or anything like yeah. that, just because the power is limited yeah. with that. <laughs> um, drawer space, um, you can see these are all included in here. Um, this is the showroom, so you kind of see like how someone maybe could decorate the room. Um, you can kind of make it your own. This is really cool about Skyberry Hall. And um, you're really close to the bathrooms too, so each um, wing has uh, easy access to the bathrooms. Um, down the hall here there's also a trash and um, recycling as well too that you can utilize it's kind of a unique situation uh, because each floor is kind of like a figure eight so if we were to walk in a circle we would end back up at that room we just left so um, the bathrooms are located in the center here and there's one on each side um, so this is just uh, one of the typical restrooms that you'll see in this uh, building so you got uh, some stalls and then 
uh, some shower space over here on the side. Or so on, so. Each wing, though, in here, you can see it has their own, like, um, this is closed right now, but they have access to, like, bring put their trash um, in each wing. So that's pretty nice, too. You're close access to that. Uh, we're also going to point out um, each floor has um, close, they have really close access to a shared kitchen. Mm -hmm. And we'll make our way in here. It's really nice because some some schools you go to where you have um, a little bit older buildings, they're not going to have a kitchen on every floor. Um, so that's something that is really awesome about our campus is even our oldest building, uh, McCall, uh, which you're not going to get to see today, but um, all of our buildings have a kitchen on every floor for the students to use. So that's really awesome. All right, keep on moving. And we do have two wings here in figure eight on the north side. This is A wing. Um, so this is one of the first floor of A wing. There's three floors. Um, so this is one of those communal spaces that you'll see a lot of students um, hanging out and studying, uh, watching some TV sports and all that fun stuff so and behind uh, right here like I was saying earlier we do have um, for move-in day for when you come to campus or Skyfair Hall this is for like your luggage or uh, any possessions if you're up on second or third floor um, you can use this to help you get off the stairs or not for people but just for, for luggage so that's a nice um, piece of Skyfair right here as well too we do have these closed off uh, study rooms as well we're using it for storage uh, right now for students that had to leave campus so um, you're not going to get to look in there, but basically it's a closed off space where you can study in peace and things. So we do have two laundry rooms in this building. Um, this one is dryers, and uh, you know, like Matt brought up before, they are uh, free to use. Um, the cost is included in your, your home bag quarters or anything like that. <laughs> We'll keep on going over here. Skyberg has a uh, bathroom on first floor as well too, just a public bathroom here. So this is for the men. Uh, and we have one for the women uh, as well here. This is kind of like in between Skyberg, like so we consider it kind of B wing, I guess you could say. So we were previously just in A wing, you now we're making our way over to C wing. Um, and this is this nice lobby space for studying. Uh, anyone's welcome to come and hang out with friends. Um, we try to make this homey as we can. Um, but we'll, we'll make our way over here and show you the game room. Now we're over at Sea Wing. Uh, this is the south side of the building. And this is also another uh, fun uh, communal space that students can, can come and study in. And then we also have this game room that we offer. Um, it's got a pool table, um, you know, more seating space, football table. Um, you can Bring your own pool sticks if you'd like, but we do have some for you to use. Uh, you just gotta check them out at the front desk at Centennial Hall. So um, this is a, a really fun place to, to hang out and, and relax when you're taking a break from studying, so. Yeah, and then over here, uh, this is the C-Wing first floor lounge. Um, you can see here we also have access to a shared printer. Um, so like I said earlier, you can have, you can have access to that and uh, you can hook that up. Also, uh, Skyberg has one here. They also have one on A Wing, I believe, on uh, the second floor as well, too. So Skyberg has a lot of close access to that. So, oh yeah, and then behind me here, you can see another lounge space. Here we got the lights turned on, so you can see uh, the nice furniture that we have. And all the TVs are hooked up to cable, so if, you have, if there's a big game you want to watch with friends or or anything really, you can, you can hook up here. It's it's a nice nice space for that. All right, so now we're gonna start walking over to Evergreen Hall, which is uh, another apartment complex that we have on campus. Um, it is LEED, and Energy and Environmental Design, a very green building, great um, different elements of, of uh, green living spaces into the construction of, of Evergreen, so. So if you guys are just joining right now, my name is Matt Peterson, Area Coordinator for Residential Life. I just wanted to make sure you guys know who I am um, if you're just joining a little bit late here. Yep, and I'm Jeff Knack, also an Area Coordinator here at UMC. So another awesome space before we get to Evergreen is this big courtyard that we have here. Um, it's really awesome when we have nice weather like this. You'll see students out here um, studying at one of the, the tables that we have spread throughout the area. Um, we do have uh, sand volleyball 
court here as well. Um, so basketball, outdoor basketball court, um, and a grill as well. So um, our community advisors, they like to, their main job is to build community, right? So um, that first weekend uh, that you're gonna be here on campus, usually weather permitting, we like to have a, a big bonfire out here and uh, you know, yard games, all that fun stuff, s'mores. Um, so uh, it's, it's a really awesome space to have right in the center of all of the residence halls. So. Well, right. well, come on, follow us. We'll head on over to Evergreen Hall. This is uh, kind of an upperclassman residence hall, apartment style housing. Uh, this building that we're about to enter was built in 2010, I believe. Uh, so it's still fairly new. Um, and the space we're about to enter is the Evergreen Grill, which is a really nice, cool spot for uh, community building. Um, they have uh, food options as well in here. Um, at really late at night, so like um, between uh, 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. on the weekends, and I think it's 7 p.m. and midnight uh, weeknights. So uh, it's really quite nice for nice to eat, maybe in between um, your study and take a break, mm -hmm. and your close access back so you can go back to your room. But yeah, you can see it's a uh, nice uh, natural light that comes into this space here. If you walk on in here, you can see you have folding table space, you have hookups um, to two TVs here, um, a stereo system, printer access, and microwave in here as well too. Um, and then also, you can see we also have uh, Sodexo dining, so if, you, if you're hungry at night, there's some really good options for like burgers, um, also some like convenience. Uh, they have a C store in here, so if you want to buy like a Gatorade or um, other items like Pop Tarts or things of that nature, uh, it's kind of a nice uh, option for students to uh, um, come to. Maybe some hot pockets. Oh, it looks like we may have a question. Here. What is your favorite meal at the Evergreen Grill? Oh, yeah. Um, for me, I love their waffle fries. Uh, waffle fries are fantastic, and they're really cheap. Actually, things are really cheap too. So, I mean, and, and also I should know too if you have like uh, Eagle Bucks. Um, I believe you can use that here as well too. Just uh, you can swipe it and, and it applies from your from your dining account and everything. Or if you have cash too, you can pay with cash too. So I was actually an alumni of UMC and I don't think they serve it anymore, but they used to have these noodle bowls um, where you would come here and it's just like a big bowl of noodles um, and you could get any type of toppings or fixings that you wanted in there and I was heavily addicted to that when <laughs> <laughs> I was a student here. So. Um, yeah, there's a new uh, item on their menu this previous year. I believe it's milkshakes. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, and I haven't had them yet, but I, I it sounds like those would be pretty good. Uh, nice evening little snack there, junk food. Uh, I like junk food, so uh, this <laughs> place is come if you like that. But they also have some healthy options too. I think they have maybe some wraps here. You can get maybe I think they made some salad options maybe. Yeah. I would think um, as well too. But students usually typically work here too, so you might have a friend perhaps um, that's that's working here at night. It's a good social space. Yeah. Alrighty, so we're gonna make our way over and check out an evergreen apartment. There's also uh, some gender neutral bathrooms here as well too. Um, two on uh, here on the evergreen grill for just to let you know. You should know too. Um, we too had the CAs promote community um, on campus, so. Um, you can see here we have a community board and we try to post uh, certain events that are taking place throughout the school year here. Each building has one of these community boards that you can uh, come to just to kind of keep up to date with things. I mean, your email is also a really good place to look as well for, for certain events too. So like we said earlier, um, apartment spaces uh, can house up to four people per apartment and we're about to enter um, one apartment uh, that's similar setup to Centennial. Um, this uh, Evergreen Hall is a little bit newer than Centennial. Um, oh, and I should note too that each wing has access to laundry in Evergreen. So you can see here we have two washers, two dryers, um, all free of course as well too. So. All right, so let's take a look at this apartment. I really gotta use the right key the first time. All right. <laughs> so 
So as you can see, uh, a little bit more updated um, than Centennial. Uh, we do make improvements to each apartment, um, you know, as needed every year. But uh, this building, just as it is a few years newer, it is obviously going to be a little more updated. Uh, same setup as Centennial. So you're going to have two bedrooms, two bathrooms, kitchen and living room. And then uh, each bedroom is going to have the, the two beds, two desks, um, nice closet space. This has a really big vaulted ceiling, so you're probably hearing me echo a little bit um, in, in here. Uh, but probably won't echo once all your stuff is in here. <laughs> Evergreen Hall also has um, easy access to the, the Wi-Fi um, cable in each room, too. Uh, if you're bringing a TV. Uh, it's a nice HD quality uh, channels that you get here on campus as well, too. Matt really likes the TV. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I'm a fan of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta highlight that. The kitchen also has a um, full-size dishwasher, which is really quite nice. For all your dishes there. You can cook a lot in your kitchen, too, so you got the full-size oven, microwave, lots of uh, drawer space. Full-size refrigerator, freezer as well too. Something, I'll do it. Uh, something too to, to point out is that we do have recycling here on campus. Uh, originally, it just started out in the uh, apartments, Centennial and Evergreen. But this past year, we've been partnering with uh, camp uh, partners across campus uh, to provide recycling in the other buildings as well. So um, we're working on that. But right now, so. Essentially, we would have a day during the week where you would put all your recyclables in these bins and then leave it outside your door and then we have student workers who come and collect it and then they, they bring it to the recycling uh, disposal area for you. So um, it's really convenient. You just pile your stuff in there. You have to make sure it is actually recyclable though and <laughs> follow the rules and make sure it's cleaned out and all that stuff. Um, but it is a, a nice feature to offer and, and we're uh, this past year we started offering it in Heritage Hall, which is our last building we're going to look at, um, and we're trying to figure out a way to do it in Skybird, which is our traditional dormitory setting as well. So, yeah. And just for a reminder that if you guys have any questions, please feel to comment below. So, um, a little bit about the community advisors. Um, each floor has a community advisor. This uh, community advisor is located right here. Typically, they're uh, located in the middle of a wing, um, so you have easy access if you need a vacuum or if you, maybe you have like a uh, roommate mediation or um, you just have general questions about on campus, like resources on campus. They are trained uh, to make sure that you're successful, uh, safe on campus and also enforce, you know, policies that, that are um, on campus as well, too. So this one's just located right here, just to show you what their room would look like. How many CAs do you typically have on staff each year? Between 13 and 15 CAs we typically employ. And that's a student position that you can apply for every semester. Anyone can apply for it, which is really nice. Um, and all of our application materials located on our website of Residential Life and and welcome to do that. Yeah, yeah they're a really awesome resource to have and um, the number that we employ kind of depends on um, how many students we're gonna have living here, yep. right? So um, so that factors in as well, but it, it, it's usually a pretty competitive position. Last last time we, we had way more applicants than we were able to hire, unfortunately. We'd like to hire a lot of people, but um, what was that? Oh yes. And uh, of course, the, the awesome perks with um, being a community advisor on, on, at U of C, uh, right now uh, they get free housing. So uh, part of a, a perk of being a, a CA is that you don't have any housing costs. You get a, a single room for free, uh, which is awesome. Um, and then you also aren't required to sign up for a meal plan. So some of these buildings, um, you are required to sign up for a meal plan if you're a, a, a student here. So. Um, in Skybird, the previous building we were in, I think it's one of the top three meal plans and uh, similar to Heritage as well because those rooms don't have a kitchen built into um, the unit, so you're required to be on a meal plan. But if you're a CA, then that um, requirement is waived, so it's pretty nice. 
Right over here is Evergreen's uh, one elevator. So that's a nice, if you live on second floor, you can utilize that for moving in. Um, we'll go ahead and make our way across here to the first floor lounge and then also the, uh, the classroom. I should also point out we have uh, on-campus security as well too, and you can see their office is right here. Other uh, resource on campus, perhaps, you know, if, if there's a security issue that's, you know, you're concerned about, you can call them. Their hours vary throughout the school year, but we do employ three uh, full-time security staff on campus that are here to assist students if they get locked out of their room or um, if there's ever a uh, safety concern. This is a really big uh, lobby space here we have in Evergreen Hall. Um, really awesome, lots of couch space. Um, you'll have lots of events that are held out here. Um, they got a really nice fireplace in the center as well. Um, I believe that these uh, chandeliers I read somewhere were actually taken from another building on campus, so they're, they're kind of like a, a, a nice feature to have you know, here and, and reuse that historic item, so that's kind of cool if you're a history nerd like myself. Um, here in, in uh, we also have an evergreen classroom, so this is another place uh, in our residence halls where you could come and have a class right inside your residence hall. It's really awesome, lots of technology in this space, um, so each one of these desks um, has uh, you know, a place where you can hook up and, and, and charge your, your laptop as you're, you're here in class, and lots of projectors, and um, really nice space to have. This uh, classroom is really awesome for uh, discussion cl types classes or uh, community building types of things. Um, you can see we have four projectors in here, which are really quite nice. You can hook up to our podium here and provides for a really uh, interactive uh, learning environment for students. You know, it's pretty unique too. This classroom is where people live too. So like in the wintertime, if you live in this building, you're, you're literally like seconds away from, from your class. A uh, really unique uh, aspect of on, living on campus here. We don't, we don't recommend waking up two minutes before your class starts, but <laughs> that is something that might happen yeah. every once in a while, and so it's kind of uh, nice to just walk downstairs and your class is here. Uh, but don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Evergreen also has a fireplace, which we should highlight too. It's kind of nice. Uh, the winter time gets pretty cold here, so you can just simply just turn it on. And uh, it's a gas fire here, so you can see it's cooking right now. It should just uh, pop on here. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Oh, there we there go. There you go. Take a look at that. That's pretty nice. Yep, you got that cooking. Um, then we also have this cool uh, piano here in the center of uh, Evergreen. And, uh, oftentimes, we'll have some students that are musically inclined that come here and, and uh, tickle the ivories. Um, it's kind of nice to, to hear. Um, obviously, you don't want to have that playing when you're in your class right now. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's really cool. And it actually plays itself as well, I think. Yep, it's got that automatic yeah. uh, player there. So. so if you want to pretend to be tickling the ivories, then uh, you can just click that thing. Pretty unique. Uh, kind of freaky to watch, though. <laughs> Does anyone know that tune? We're gonna make our way over to Heritage Hall. You didn't miss much. Basically, we talked about uh, laundry rooms over here. We have them on the other side of the building as well. And then um, some workout spaces on second floor of Evergreen, which is pretty nice to have. Yeah. So. All right, well, um, there are some common questions that people maybe have. Um, when you yeah. sign up for housing, uh, we can maybe address those right now. Um, so let's say you sign up for housing and uh, yeah, you put down on your housing contract. Um, typically, we'll, we'll try our best to match up um, placements with people that you desire to live with. Um, now, if you don't know who you want to live with, um, we'll try our best to, to place you based on maybe your major, um, also the roommate preferences link um, as well. Um, if you need have questions about that, we can send that to you. Um, so then you can go ahead and you can uh, let us know maybe if you're a morning person or a, a night owl, maybe you, you like things a certain way in your room clean. Um, but placements will be sent off um, your official room placement for fall uh, about mid-June. So about June 15th around there, we're shooting for that date for, for those to be sent off over email. So. Yeah. Um,
another question may uh, come up if you see some pets walking around on campus. If they see a dog or a, a cat, maybe an iguana. Okay, probably not an iguana. But, um, you may see some animals. And those are going to be um, people who have been approved to have either a uh, service animal um, or a uh, assistance animal. Or their the language has kind of changed from emotional support to assistance animal. So, um, you can get approved to have those if you want to You just have to work with our department and the Disability Resource Center through PL Myers, and uh, we can make sure that we, uh, you know, part, we, we partner to make sure that uh, that can happen for you to, to have that, mm -hmm. that assistance animal with you. Uh, you may notice uh, around us here we have some wonderful parks on campus that are in close proximity to your residence hall. We have reserved spots uh, as well as an all lots park uh, parking permits. Um, a little bit about like the reserved parking spot. Um, you have to pay a little bit more for that, but you get your own reserved spot. And you can see behind Jeff over here, we have uh, reserve uh, lot F. Um, and uh, what you get for the reserved parking spot is you get a hookup. So it gets really cold here in the winter time. So if you want to hook up to a block heater for your car, that's a nice, nice option um, as well. There's also you can see here we also have. Uh, parking spots over here. Um, students will get reserved or they can get all lots. And if you want a parking permit, you can get both on the business office and so they call. We're getting some of that really good crimson wind here, so we're going to go back. Um, so, a little bit about heritage. Um, when, you, when you do live in heritage, uh, you each will be assigned a U card. And you can see here, this is my U card. Um, you actually don't need to even like swipe it. You just literally put it in front of the car reader and it'll read it. So you just enter the building, which is a really nice feature of Heritage. Heritage is our newest building on campus, built in, it's the one we're in right now, built in 2013. So, um, a little bit more information about Heritage. Um, this has four community advisors in it, it's primarily for um, first year students, freshmen, sophomores um, that are living in this. Uh, sweet style um, living arrangement. So um, traditionally, you know, uh, you look at other campuses across the nation, maybe they're traditional style housing, maybe dormitory style. This is sweet style, and we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll point that out to you what that looks like. So you get a little bit more amenities, uh, a really nice option for, for living on campus. Yeah. And so each floor does have, um, similar to uh, Evergreen, where there's a laundry room on each floor. So this floor has a laundry room and uh, kitchen on each floor and then depending on what level you are on first or second level um, you're also going to have an exercise room or a study room in the center of each floor so you can see behind me here um, each wing has uh, access to a shared kitchen and uh, as you can see here it has a nice big screen TV in each uh, kitchen space we have access to a coaster um, there's actually a dishwasher in each uh, shared wing really quite nice um, you have access to an oven, microwave, um, no big refrigerator are located in here, but in your, the suites they will have little mini fridge freezers um, that you can see. And then oh, you can see this is just window here to the um, Centennial outside here. Yeah. You even get some leftover uh, elbow macaroni. Yes. If you need to borrow snot. <laughs> All right, so then we'll keep on going. This is uh, what I was talking about where if you're on first floor, you're going to get to have an exercise room. And then on second floor, because we don't want to hear people's you know, feet, feet pounding as they're exercising, on second floor we have a study room instead of an exercise room. Um, so there's some nice equipment on, in this one. On the other side, there's more uh, cardio equipment. I think there's uh, some uh, treadmills over on the other side. But here's uh, one of our laundry rooms. <laughs> so yeah, this laundry room, uh, every laundry room in Heritage has two washers, two dryers, free of course. Um, and also they have access to an iron, um, here's an ironing board, each uh, laundry facility has an laundry, la iron board and then uh, iron, uh, this one looks like it's missing but we'll make sure we have each uh, laundry facility has that. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll make our way out um, into the uh, Heritage uh, lobby. Yep. So this is kind of a similar concept 
uh, to Evergreen where there's lots of open space. Uh, everyone can see each other when they're out in the lobby here. Um, this is also another uh, building that has a very vibrant community. Um, we have these uh, uh, restrooms here in the, in the center of the building, you know, kind of public restrooms. And then um, this big open space in the center here, which is really awesome. You have this cool uh, study room as well that has glass walls. So um, you can still see people in there studying and they can see you, but um, they kind of can separate themselves from the noise of people walking in the hallway and the lobby out here. I'll see. Matt, can you hear me? Oh, I can't really hear you though. Okay. Yeah, so it's a pretty nice, <laughs> it's not soundproof, but it's a pretty nice place to separate yourself uh, if you need a, a nice place to study. Yeah, we should point out too, this building uh, has an elk that's uh, yeah. kind of unique. Uh, you can take a look there up on the wall for our hunters. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Some antlers as well. Um, yeah, so if you, if you come on upstairs, we'll, we'll point out uh, also upstairs is pretty unique too. A nice uh, space for community building. Sometimes we get questions about wait lists as well for buildings. Um, and we, we always say that it's best to um, apply early. But generally, um, if, if you're a, a new student applying for Heritage, you're not going to face a wait list because we do save this building for those new students, those incoming freshmen and, and uh, first year students. So um, this, if you want to get in this building, there's a very uh, high likelihood that And we got the elk there in the lobby and then we have uh, Mr. Bison here. Um, I was actually uh, the first class to live in this building and uh, when I was the first class to live in this building, the elk or the bison disappeared, and uh, someone <laughs> someone had taken it and brought it to their room. So please don't do that um, <laughs> because that's not nice. We do have cameras, so um, our, our security keeps a track on things. So please don't uh, mess with the bison. <laughs> So this building is two stories. Um, you can see we're panning down to the first floor lobby here. Um, right behind behind us here, we have the elevator that's in the middle of the building. So for a move in, helps with moving in uh, during that welcome weekend coming up in August. Um, oh yeah, and I should point out too, that each floor has access to a printer. So this is the second floor printer um, right here. And then right here is Jeff is going to point show uh, the the game room up on the second floor. Yes, yeah, so we got another game room. Um, we have another pool table up here, and this one actually converts into um, ping pong as well. I think with those uh, those tables there can be uh, placed on top of it, and you can convert it into a ping pong table, which is awesome. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be a poker table there. I'm not sure how often that's used, but. Um, <laughs> another really cool space where you can uh, sit and watch TV as a, as a group or, um, you know, hang out in this space, so. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, show you what an actual Heritage Suite looks like. If you follow us. So I have another question. Yes. Um, what kind of activities do your community advisors yeah. sponsor throughout the year? So we put on a wide range of activities throughout the school year. Um, I'd say a popular one that we've done in the past, there's an old theater in town called the Grand Theater. Um, just located in Crookston, we provide free movie nights um, for that location. Um, we've brought in people to Itasca State Park um, on a Saturday, which is really well attended event that we did previously this year. Um, we've done small events, um, big events, so, so some bigger ones that we've done. We actually brought people down to the Vikings game, um, US Bank Stadium in the past, or the Twins games, um, long day trips for those types of things. Um, bowling's another really popular one. Um, unfortunately, Crookston does not have a bowling alley, 
uh, but we do go to um, the one in Grand Forks um, for, for that location for bowling, which is not very far. It's only like 20 or so miles away. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for new things. I, I'm a big art guy, so I put on like ceramics events on campus, uh, painting. People really like to, to do those types of things, get together as a community. Cooking's really popular too, yeah. um, potlucks. Yeah, we try to also encourage them to have, um, it's awesome to have those big events as well, but sometimes it's cool to have more of an intimate event. So sometimes they'll mm -hmm. have, um, you know, open hours where they'll sit in the lobby and they'll just invite people to come chat with them if they need to um, have a chat or, if, um, you know, about something serious or maybe they just want to, you know, mm -hmm. talk and hang out. Um, movie nights in the in the lobby or um, game, game nights, you know, board games, things like that. So... And this upcoming year might be a little bit different, of course, with the, the COVID-19 outbreak. So we'll have to uh, make sure that safety is obviously their number one priority with that. So social distancing practices will definitely need to be um, uh, make sure that we're following those guidelines. So we'll get more direction with that, I'm sure, as the, the school year um, gets closer here. Yeah. All right. So the long-awaited Heritage Suites. Now, what do we mean by suite? So it's a little bit... It's kind of in between Skyberg and the apartments where you have everything you need inside the suite except for the kitchen, which is shared in the hallway. So um, four students in here, uh, two on each side, and then there's this study or living space in the center. Um, and then it's really cool because it has this built-in, um, I guess you could say three-person bathroom where you could have someone in the toilet area, someone in the shower area, and someone brushing their teeth all at the same time without um, having to, uh, with, with still having some privacy there. So that's really nice um, to have that because they have the separation doors there. Um, but yeah, we can look in this space here. Um, this is what you're gonna find in a heritage suite. So you're gonna have two beds and these are self-lofting actually. So um, as you can see, um, it's all, the headboard is all one piece. So if you wanna loft your bed, all you need to do is just take it and flip it upside down and then it becomes a loftable space kind of like this and then you're going to have two desks of course two nightstands and then each suite um, has two uh, refrigerators as well so each bedroom has its own mini fridge also heritage is really quite nice because it has each bedroom has hookups to uh, how you like your room temperature so whether it's really hot out air conditioning can go down to 60 degrees or say it's really cold out, this can actually go up to 90 degrees. So you get a lot of independence there with the temp room temperature and that's in each bedroom. So this bedroom, then the other bedroom, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's nice to have that independent, uh, you know, heating and cooling because some people may like to have it cold at night. Um, some people may like to have it warm. Uh, this is more of like an open space of what you're at. That's not really made up. Uh, this rug wouldn't be in here, but this is what you would see when you came in on move-in day. Um, you're gonna have the bed and um, all the stuff is there, so. Yeah. yeah, so we'll go ahead, we'll close, shut the lights on. Yep. We're gonna uh, walk down the hallway towards Heritage Classroom, which is the last um, built-in classroom we have in the residence halls. Um, Again, really nice to have that separated. Um, this one is a little bit more separated than the Centennial and Evergreen classroom where it's actually on the end of the building. So um, people who maybe don't live in the residence halls um, don't have to walk through the living spaces, you know, to get to class. Before we uh, make our way over to, uh, like I said earlier, so, uh, Heritage Hall has four CAs. Um, the CAs are located in each the middle, middle of each wing. So just for example, this is a CA room here. In the middle, you can see in the hallway here. So if you have any questions, these, these are good access uh, for help. And then you can see they usually post something um, on the whiteboard as well too, contact information if you need to get a hold of them. Because they are students too, and they might have classes and yep. other commitments. Yep. Another question that's frequently asked is what can I bring into my room and maybe what can't I bring in? Um, we mentioned at the very beginning about how um, we try to say you can't bring in like a deep freezer, um, you know, full-size refrigerators, things like that. We don't really want that power drawn for those things. Other things um, we encourage you to have um, are things that don't have open flames. So you want to make sure that you don't have um, 
like space heaters that are like for deer hunting or something like that. You know, you want to have mm -hmm. a, uh, an electric one, um, or I think it's called like a ceramic one. Um, and then also, you know, Keurigs are nice because they're they don't have a hot plate on them. Um, toasters, you want to make sure you can bring a toaster with you. You just have to make sure that you don't use it in your room um, unless it's mm -hmm. uh, you know an apartment building, of course then you can use it in the kitchen, but you want to make sure that if you have a toaster in Heritage or Skyberg that you only use it in the kitchen spaces. Candles and incense are not allowed either just because it's a big fire hazard. Mm -hmm. So we just ask you to just keep those at home. Yep, so. Yep. They do have lots of nice uh, wall plugins for smells at uh, Bath & Body yeah. Works now, so <laughs> yeah, you can use those. So the space we're about to walk in is the Heritage classroom. This is a hundred, uh, seat capacity classroom. We'll try to turn the lights on so you can see, but this is a really uh, an awesome space on campus for big events for, for class, uh, for the classrooms as well too for during the school year. You can see here how many chairs, and this is a really um, quite a cool space, you know, for, for utilizing uh, the projectors as well mm -hmm. um, on campus for lecture style uh, classes. We also hold events in here as well, so all these tables can be um, taken down and, and moved to the side. And we actually held uh, some dance classes here um, last semester, which mm -hmm. was really cool. Um, you know, other big events like that where you would need the, the floor space. So um, that's kind of a nice thing to have is this awesome, you know, really large space where you can convert it in so many ways right in the residence halls on campus. One big event we did this last fall was uh, 21 Days to Success, which is like a 21 day program where we encourage people to uh, get caught studying in the res halls. They get study books and then uh, you can submit those into a big study book uh, box. And uh, on the 21st day, we have a big giveaway event where we have, we give out big screen TVs. Uh, we've given out um, uh, just odds and ends like snacks, uh, movies, uh, techno toys. Uh, <laughs> We, we have it set up in this big space here for any Olon campus students to come and uh, we have a drawing where, where um, you have a chance to win some really, really awesome prizes and a uh, good uh, social uh, event where we have free food too. So we encourage people to study and uh, be uh, successful here on campus through their classes. So. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we're getting to the end of our tour here, so we'll just come out of the classroom here. Um, if there's any last questions, make sure that you uh, start posting those now, and, and if you have any further questions or think of them later, then um, please feel free to contact us as well, or um, you know, submit a com uh, comment, and we'll make sure to follow up on it with you. One question that maybe comes up, uh, does UMC have a requirement where you have to, to live on campus? Uh, no, we don't have a requirement to live on campus, but we do highly encourage living on campus, so just because Students who do live on campus actually perform, it's statistically proven that they, they do perform academically better uh, by living on campus just because you're close access to on-campus programs, um, access to resources, the library perhaps, uh, just reliable internet, um, all these types of things. It's all really uh, a nice, um, uh, safe way to, to be successful on campus. So something to keep in mind if, if you're wondering if I should live on campus or off campus. Or, and we have really devoted staff that really care for, for your well-being on campus too. Um, we want you to be successful and, and ultimately graduate here on campus. So, yeah. Are there any further questions that are coming in? Or? We'll end off with what was your favorite memory from this year? Whether that be an event or yeah. something that you did with students? Boy. Let me think, do you have one on top of your head yet? Yeah, I think my favorite event every year is um, uh, it, obviously this year, um, at the end of the year, it's going to be a little bit different due to COVID, uh, but I really like, you know, commencement when students graduate and, and, and all that, but definitely from this particular year, when students were coming in was awesome, you know, having those those games out in the yard um, is really a fun bonding experience. Um, getting to know um, Matt and my mm -hmm. student staff, uh, we supervise the community advisors, so that's really fun to, to get to know them on a more personal basis. and and helping students you know, along the way as well is really fun, so, yeah. Yeah, I'd say for me, um, I think it's a really exciting place just because of the uh, close-knit community that we have here on campus, but 
Um, I know I highlighted this earlier in our tour, but the Itasca trip that we did, I, uh, going into that, I've never actually been to Itasca with, uh, with our, we have such a uh, strong uh, uh, connection to natural resources here on campus, and so for us to do that trip to Itasca was really quite uh, fun and to see the excitement of people's eyes when we got there, just because it's a special place. Uh, that we provided a free trip for, for on-campus students. It was really quite fun to, and fulfilling. It's only two hours away here from Crookston, too, um, and so we, we definitely uh, want to highlight you know, people's interests and in what they want to do, and especially highlighting our, our great outdoors that we have here in Crookston. We have, uh, really, it's a, it's a beautiful place, a uh, hidden gem of, of Minnesota, I think, and, and the cool thing about being a smaller campus, though, too, is we really get to um, bring out uh, all the different, you're not just a number here on campus, you're really, we need to know your, your first and last name, um, and, and people are, uh, really care for your well-being, the faculty, staff here on campus, I feel like we really were able to um, provide a, a fun, uh, engaging event on uh, campus here in the fall. The spring has been kind of challenging, of course, because once spring break hit in March, uh, things changed drastically here on campus. Um, uh, but we're hoping that we can, we can get back to, uh, to some point of normalcy here in the fall. Um, so we can we can uh, uh, build on that community, continuing to do that here at Crookston. So, well, we want to thank you all for joining us. Um, it's been an awesome uh, experience doing this this first test run of the yeah. Facebook and Instagram live housing tour. So, um, again, please reach out if you have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns about uh, living on campus, what the residence halls are like, and uh, we'll be happy to answer all those questions you have. So. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Have a good day. <laughs> Thanks.